everybody. Today we're going to be learning about illustration. An illustration is when you take an idea that comes from words like a story or a product and you turn it into pictures. There's lots of different jobs that artists have in the world of illustration. If you watch the first video, you might have seen a book called Pocket Full of Colors. The Magical World of Mary Blair, Disney Artist Extraordinaire. Mary Blair was an artist who grew up in three different places, Oklahoma, Texas, and California, and she lived most of her life in California. Her job was a concept artist for films, mainly for Disney and other places. She loved watercolor and traveled to South America with Walt Disney himself, but a lot of the places that she drew, she'd never been to before. So I decided that for our second video, we would read the book Island Born by Juno Diaz. And the illustrator of the book is Leo Espinosa. And Leo Espinosa and Mary Blair have really similar illustration styles. And in the book Island Born, the character has to think about a place that she's never been to before. So it's perfect for this assignment. Leo Espinosa grew up in Bogota, Colombia, and now lives in Utah. And there's a link in the description below where you can check out a little video of Leo Espinosa describing how he makes his artwork for Islandborn in particular. But he's also been hired by different companies to make illustrations on the covers of magazines like The New Yorker. Um, to illustrate an article and maybe provide some information about something in a magazine called Wired. And he's also made greeting cards that you could give to someone on their birthday and advertisements for things like, I don't know, some crackers that you'd like to buy. He also, oh, that's two jobs already, children's book author, and he also makes illustrations for companies, right? His third job is he's also a teacher, and he's taught at different schools around the country, like the Rhode Island School of Design and Pratt and Parsons Design Institutions. Mary Blair loves watercolor, and Leo Espinosa uses a combination of different art materials as well as computers to make his illustrations. So that naturally made me think of one more artist, and that artist, big surprise, is right here next to me. What? It's Mr. Steve. Mr. Steve has been helping me film these videos because Mr. Steve is a filmmaker, but Mr. Steve is also my husband. <laughs> so I know a lot about him, but you may not because I haven't been able to get Mr. Steve to come into school for a little talk. But now that we're stuck in quarantine, it's the perfect opportunity. We can film a little interview. So I started out with some questions that I thought you might want to ask. So we'll do a little bit of an interview and then we'll get started with our demonstration. Sounds good. Hi, Mr. Steve. Hello. How did you decide to study illustration? I decided to study illustration um, probably when I was 17 or so. Um, I'd always loved storytelling and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do career-wise with art, and I sort of narrowed it down to graphic design and illustration, and when I found out that illustrators were storytellers, that's kind of what sealed it for me. And so once I found that out, that was, that was my decision. So graphic design is a way of illustrating more for companies. That's the part of Leo Espinosa's job where he made things for the New Yorker or Wired magazine. And briefly, they work very close hand in hand, graphic designers and illustrators. Yeah. And one isn't necessarily better than the other. It's just more where I felt my strengths lied in telling stories and things like that. And that storytelling led you to work in, um, in comic books a little bit, right? Yes. Yes, that was, I started working in comics, I guess after, a few years after undergraduate, uh, after I got my undergraduate degree. And it was actually through a friend. Um, he was already working at the comic book shop. Yeah, he got me a job there and it was great. I was there for about 
four years, three years, three or four years. Did you get to write the stories? I did not get to write the stories, unfortunately, but I did get to illustrate and color a lot of the stories that were already written by other very talented writers. And all of it, I mean, and I'm sure Ms. Forslund has told you that all of the, the arts are sort of, they have this harmonious relationship with one another. And so even though I'm not actively writing a story, the illustration in and of itself is also communicating that story without words, just using pictures. And so I still felt like I was a part of the storytelling process, just not actually crafting the words. Awesome. So where did you go to school to learn to be an illustrator? I went to school here in Philadelphia. I went to the University of the Arts. It's in Center City and uh, it was a great experience. And I I learned a ton about drawing. I learned a ton about illustration and like the different types of illustration as Ms. Forslund pointed out. We did um, some packaging design, comic books, video game design, album cover art, posters. Um, there's tons and tons and tons of different things you can do with illustration. It's a very broad um, category, which is great because it doesn't uh, lock you into sort of one way to express yourself. Um, and you can also have more opportunities to get a job and make money, which is also good. So when you worked in comic books or when you were um, studying to become an illustrator, did you invent your own comic book characters or worlds? I did. Um, not so much for the job that I was working on, but some of my own stuff, um, I was able to create my own characters, create my own worlds. Um, and it was a lot of fun because I love drawing. And so just letting your imagination go wild, um, you know, you can pretty much do whatever you can think of. And that's, like I said, one of the reasons uh, that I was drawn to illustration. What is your favorite art material to work with? My favorite art material to work with... <sighs> this might surprise you, is just a simple pencil and some computer paper. I, like I said, have always loved drawing and that, you know, all of the painting and sculpture and all those other things are great and I love them, but I think there's something about the simplicity of it, just not worrying about too many other things, just focusing on the pencil in my hand and the paper and just having fun. Why did you change from illustration or comic books to making films and movies? film is just another way to tell a story using pictures that you're just using a lot more pictures. It's very similar to animation um, where you have 12 or 24 images going by every second and creating the illusion of movement and telling a story uh, much more rapidly than um, with a single image like in a children's book or a comic book. Um, but ultimately, the collaborative nature of film also was something that I was really interested in because I'm sure a lot of you might know that like when you're drawing and it's great when you're by yourself and you can just, you know, get into your own world. Um, but sometimes it's nice to, to have a friend or to have a couple of friends help you out. And so being able to tell stories a little bit of a, of a bigger scale um, really appealed to me. Cool. So you like working with other people. I do. I do. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's really great to bounce ideas off of other people because they can see something um, that you don't see and they can help you out. Or if you're struggling, you know, they can, you know, help you solve the problem or just get input in like, is this working? Is this not working? How do you use your illustration skills now that you're a filmmaker? The main way that I use illustration in filmmaking is primarily through creating storyboards. The fun thing about uh, making a film is that it takes usually a pretty large group of people to come together to tell this singular story, but oftentimes the director has an idea in their head and the easiest way to communicate that idea to his or her crew is through storyboards. And so rather than saying, you know, I want to put this actor here and I want the background to look like this or I want, you know, uh, the camera movement, you know, to do this, they can just draw a single picture and say, this is what I want it to look like. And then all the people on the film set can all look at it and say, oh, OK, that's really cool. So using what I learned at college to help, again, tell that story just using pictures that we then translate into film usually makes the process go a lot faster so we're not wasting time and wasting money because films are very expensive. We call them storyboards and they often look a lot like a comic book. Mm -hmm. And because I have worked for Mr. Steve before as a production designer, it's really important for me to be able to see what he means and what's going to be in the film like, for example, if we're filming this right here, 
I need to know if the other end of this table is in the shot because as production designer, if somebody left their glass of water over here, it might distract somebody in the audience. So it's helpful for working together that he makes his little drawings. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, Mr. Steve, yes. today and this week, mm -hmm. the third grade is going to be drawing a place that they've never been to before, but would love to go to after quarantine is over. Mm -hmm. And it could be anywhere in the world. So, like the moon? Is the that... moon could be, okay. yes. Okay. Because so, that's where I want to go. Really? Yeah. That's what you draw? Yeah. So, have you ever drawn a place that you've never been to before? That I can remember. I've not drawn... Um, an image of a place that I've not yet been. However, because we are doing this assignment right now, it would be really fun to do it alongside you all. So um, once Ms. Forslund uh, is finished with uh, the assignment and she uploads everything, we'll have a little treat and she can upload uh, my drawing of a place that I've never been. It may or may not be the moon, I don't know. We'll have to see. <laughs> um, and so you'll get to see um, all the crazy things going on in my head. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Steve. Oh, yeah. I was happy to, happy to be here. All right. Now check out the video for the demonstration. 